After adventuring and drove back, I headed back to Oslo to check out some of the awesome boat museums. Oslo is a hub for Norwegian museums, and the island of Bagdoy on the west side of Oslo holds many of the country's maritime-related museums. I decided to try to visit four of them, three on the first day and the final Viking boat museum the next day before I headed south to visit my grandma's cousin. On the first day, I visited the Maritime Museum, the Kontiki Museum, and the Fram Museum. The Maritime Museum showcased a historical timeline of shipbuilding from the Viking Age to current cruise ships, showing Norway's rich and diverse sailing culture. survival suits. How crazy would that be to wear? This is the traditional clinker built hall. This is Carville Built Hall. Fastened with rivets and bolts. Fastened with mostly dowels. Rivets. Steel. Riveted steel, welded steel, stainless, oh it's aluminum, sorry, aluminum, and carbon fiber. Kontiki was a traditional Peruvian boat built by a Norwegian researcher named Thor Herendal. Kontiki left Peru in 1947 with the goal of reaching the Polynesian Islands. Its captain, Thor Herendal, was out to prove that the people of South America could have settled Polynesia. They reached the Polynesian Islands 101 days later. The boat was constructed mainly of balsa trees and hemp rope. It carried six men and all the supplies they needed to survive on the journey. The museum also held another one of Thor's boats, known as the Raw Two, which he used to sail across the Atlantic. The last museum I visited that day was the Fram Museum. Fram is a three-masted wood schooner with a length of 39 meters and with a width of 11 meters. She was used in three Arctic and Antarctic research expeditions between 1893 and 1912. She was designed to survive being encapsulated by ice in order to survive in the Arctic and to bring her inhabitants to the poles. Nansen, the lead explorer on Fram, wanted to prove that a current ran east to west beneath the Arctic ice sheet. Ah, creepy AF. Well, if there's anything that's ever made me not want to sail to the Arctic, it's all the creepy sounds in this ship. Look at those timbers though. There's a lot of theatrics going on in here. Not actually that bad looking for like comfort. Decent sized little rooms. I also highly recommend visiting the museum as it was very well put together and packed full of information. So 
I'm in a simulator. Well, that's creepy. Of an Arctic ship with ice pushing against it. It's bloody freezing in here. Doing a good job. Oh good, I'm out. That was too cold for my liking. That weird experience was... Let's read this. The Polar Simulator. It shows you what it's like to be inside a wooden ship about to be crushed by the ice in the Arctic. It was as unpleasant as it sounds. The sign said the Nassen photographs. Turns out that means there's a whole extra boat in here. Who would have thought? It's pretty cool too. Looks quite a bit older than the first one. The second ship is named Yoa. Built in 1872, she was the first ship to be sailed through the entire Northwest Passage. It's quite a bit smaller, the sail. It's only one sail. Very, very different boat. Pretty cool though. This boat has one mast and three head sails as well as one main sail. Quite a bit different than the other boat. Smells good in here. Clearly a lot of this is new woodwork. Beautiful. Whoa, there's the old timbers. Crazy. The expedition took place from 1903 to 1906. The next day I decided to visit the museum I was most looking forward to seeing, the Viking Ship Museum. Home to three Viking ships which were all discovered buried in various places in Norway, the Viking Ship Museum is a great way to get an idea of what sea trade was like at the turn of the last millennium. The Oseberg ship was buried in 834 AD with two women inside of it, surrounded by many ornate and expensive items. Dug up on a farm in 1903. So cool. It is not exactly known what the roles of the women were in the community, but it is believed that they may have been a vulva or Viking witch and her servant, among other theories. The Gokstad ship was built in 890 AD and used as a burial ship for a wealthy man around 900 AD. So this ship could go 12 knots under sail and was actually an ocean-going ship. How crazy is that? You imagine sailing from like Norway to Iceland in a wooden boat like this with 32 men. It would just be absolutely insane and very wet. I think it would be very wet. It was discovered on a farm in 1879. These are some of the items that were on the Oseberg when she was resurrected. It is believed that most of them were decorated for pageantry, and they speak of the wealth and importance of the women buried on the ship. After the museum, I headed south to visit my grandma's cousin and her family, but I decided to enjoy their company instead of filming this part of the trip. 
Following the visit, I headed to Sandy Fjord. Once a whaling town, Sandy Fjord is now a summer hotspot and a ferry port. to my final destination on this trip and it is beautiful out look at this weather I didn't think I was gonna see the Sun while I was in Norway but it came out yesterday and it came out today and I even got to see the sunrise this morning which was amazing I am exhausted <laughs> so ready to be in my own bed but I am also extremely happy and incredibly grateful for being able to come and see this beautiful country as well as Germany and Poland and Lithuania it was an awesome trip. So, so, so happy I decided to do it. And look at this place, it's amazing. That night I witnessed another beautiful sunset. Norway said a warm goodbye. One of the coolest parts of my entire trip though, especially after seeing the Fram Museum, was seeing Greenland from the air. The shadows stretched on for miles and massive mountains looked like hills. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, liking, and telling your friends. I hope you enjoyed traveling with me in Europe.